Now remember when we first talked about functions that have um, a vector input and a scalar output, we, we were looking at the idea of a level set. If our function had two inputs and one output, then our level sets were actually level curves. And so we get for a particular function something that looked a lot like a contour map, right? And this contour map gave us information about how the function was changing. So if this was the altitude 1 line, altitude 2 line, 3, 4, and 5, so if we have these level sets or level curves in this case, then we can see that if we want to increase our height, then we should go in the direction in this direction, right? And if you want to decrease, we should go in that direction. And if you go along the level curve, then you won't have any change in height at all. Now we've just learned about the gradient, right? The gradient was telling us the direction of steepest ascent. So the gradient actually points in the direction that you should go to, to get steepest ascent. Now if you're on a level curve, the fastest way to get to a higher level would be to go perpendicular to the level curve. Stands to reason, right? If, if you're staying on this curve keeps you at the same level, you should get off that curve as quickly as possible. So it turns out that the gradient of f is actually perpendicular to the level curves and the level sets. Now you could actually prove that in this case. If you had f of x, y equal to some constant, then this, this, um, this is going to be a level set, right? The level set's going to be a level curve. So you could parameterize that level curve. So you could write that level curve in the form um, r of t equals some function x of t and some function y of t, right? This is just a parameterization of that curve. And then what you could do is you could think about, um, let's see, our function um, f of r of t. Now on this curve, this, um, when we take f of any point on this curve, we get the same value, right? Because this is a parameterization of that level curve. So the value of f is equal to um, that same constant c. Now, through the chain rule, we have t, which that gets turned into an x and y by our parameterization. And then f turns that back into this constant c. So we could use the chain rule here to figure out the derivative. Um, according to the chain rule, we should get um, the derivative of this function f. So that's going to be f sub x and f sub y times the derivative of our parameterization. So that'll be x prime of t, y prime of t. And um, then the derivative of this with respect to t, since it's constant, is 0. Now if you look at this, this is the gradient of f dotted with r prime of t, right? Because this is r prime of t. If you do this matrix multiplication, you just get the gradient of f dotted with r prime of t equals 0. But when the dot product of two vectors is zero, it means the two vectors are orthogonal. So this is the this is the tangent to the level curve, and this is the gradient, right? And what we're saying is that the gradient then is perpendicular to the tangent of the level curve. The gradient is perpendicular to the level sets. We could do a similar argument. Um, for a function that had three inputs and one output, except for we would have a parameterization of these level sets, and we could see that um, no matter what, the gradient was perpendicular to the normal of those level sets. Let's look at an example. So we've got this function f of x, y. It's equal to x squared minus y. And we want, we want to sketch the curve where f of x, y equals 1. So that's going to be one level set of this curve. And we're going to compare that to the gradient of the function at, at, um, at a, a particular point, at the point square root of 2, 1. And then we'll find the equation of the tangent line. So first, let's, um, let's sketch this curve. If x squared minus y equals 1, then x squared equals y plus 1. So y equals x squared minus 1. So our level curve is actually just a, a very simple parabola, right? Your basic parabola x squared just shifted down by 1. So there's our level curve where f is equal to 1. On all these points, our function has the same value. OK, so that's like one contour line. Now we're going to calculate the gradient of f. So looking at this function x squared minus y, the gradient would be the derivative of respect to x, which is 2x, and comma, the derivative of respect to y, which is negative 1. So the gradient f at our particular location so at the square root of 2 and 1, 
is equal to 2 root 2 and negative 1. Where is that point, square root of 2, 1? Now, square root of 2 is a little past, past uh, is 1.4, so it's kind of about halfway between 1 and 2. And then 1 is, of course, right there. So this is our location. And now we can look at um, the gradient is telling us that we should go forward to root 2. That's about, um, root 2 is 1.4, so we should go forward about 2 point, let's see, 2.8, right? And then down 1. So we're going forward um, 1, 2, almost 3, and down 1. It's create, the gradient is giving us right, something that is perpendicular to the tangent of the level set. Right? Now, how could we find, if we need to find the equation of the tangent line, we need a vector that goes in the direction of that tangent line. So, but we could easily find that because we know that the tangent to this curve is perpendicular to the gradient. And when we have a vector in two dimensions, it's easy to make something perpendicular. You just switch the two components and you change the sign on one of them. So for example, if I switch the two and change the sign on the negative one to one, then this is going to give me a vector that's perpendicular to the gradient. Notice if you take the dot product, you're going to get two root two minus two root two, it's zero. So this then is a vector in the direction of the tangent. The slope is going to be the rise over the run, so the change in y over change in x. So root two over two divided by one will be two root two. So we just need to find the equation of the tangent line then. We have this, we have this point on the on the plane, right? We know x naught equals root 2 and y naught equals 1, and we have the slope. So the change in y is equal to the slope times the change in x for a line. And so the change in y is going to be y minus the starting value of 1, and the slope is 2 root 2, and that's going to be times um, x minus the starting value of x. So with a little simplification, we get y equals 2 root 2 times x root 2 times root 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so we have minus 4 plus 1. The equation of the tangent must be 2 root 2 x minus 3. What have we used here? Well, we drew a level curve, right? We know that when you calculate the gradient, the gradient at a particular location gives you a vector that is perpendicular to the level curve. Of course, if you have a vector perpendicular to the level curve, you can actually find a vector um, that is tangent to the, to the um, level curve. Just find any vector that's perpendicular to the gradient. So we just swi switched the components, changed the sign on one, and we got a vector that was, that was um, perpendicular to the gradient. This must point in the direction of the line. You could figure out the slope just by taking the rise divided by the run, and we found the equation of the tangent.